hi a good good afternoon evening and morning everybody it's another beautiful day and guess what we have in the studio if you can read arabic let's start there our fauna emiratus today we have a very important guest in the studio we have professor al Khalaf who is joining us if you could Join us in. I don't know what we are expecting, but I know it's gonna be fully impacted with wisdom. So you're welcome. Yeah, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmat Allah wa barakatuh. Oh, first things first, Professor. Yes, yes, yes. Safety That's important. First, yes. safety yes, first. Very important. Absolutely. So now we have to make sure that everything we do, safety comes yes. very, very fast. Yeah, that's very so important. take a minute and tell us. So, oh, you still have your mask on? Yeah, I put that. Oh, down. this I is absolute down. safety. <laughs> <laughs> so I put it down. Uh -huh. So take a minute, tell yeah. us who you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will check. Uh, ahlan wa sahlan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm. Ahlan wa sahlan fi Dubai. Welcome mm -hmm. in Dubai. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be here on your channel. Oh, thank you very much for yeah. honoring the invitation. Yeah, and, uh -huh. and uh, we hope all the best that you have more uh, uh, spectators coming and uh, you know. Inshallah. And inshallah, it will be thousands and thousands and thousands, inshallah, uh -huh. because it will be, inshallah, more interesting always, every time you are putting something on YouTube, I, I hope to be more interesting. Oh yeah. yeah, guys, just for you to know, Professor al Khalaf has been on YouTube since 2008. Is, yes. Is that right? Yeah. And right now, he's almost approaching 100,000 Yeah, I have now 80,000. 80, Can so you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's such an honor. I yes. am very, very humbled that you accepted to feature in our channel. So, most of the reason is about wisdom yeah. so tell us what you do and why do we have books here today yes um from my beginning as a student from you know uh, kuwait university then went to Durham university mm -hmm. uh, then to germany so i was always interested in animals in zoology Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I uh, began doing a lot of research All right. in a lot of Arabic countries and also my origin country, Palestine. Oh, Palestine! Palestine, Palestine. Hi, but I hope we now have Palestinian subscribers in the channel. Yeah, I don't know if you can see all the people from Palestine. I don't know if you can see all the people from Palestine. Thank you, thank you. Well, I began uh, um, issuing my own uh, magazine in 1983, so it's now uh, nearly uh, About 30 30, 30, 38 years now, nearly. Wow. Yeah. And uh, writing a lot of research, doing a lot of research. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my studies, I began also writing books, so I began writing my first book. Uh, well, this is one of the books which I have written. This is um, Fauna Emiratus. So, uh, Emiratus, means, Emiratus is like the... It's the Latin name of the Emirates. For the Emirates. The Latin name of the Emirates is Emiratus. Mm. And, fauna and fauna is animals. The animals of the Emirates. Ah, so flora is the biological flora name is, for plants. Yeah, flora is plants uh -huh. and fauna um, is animals. Correct. So, yeah. this... This specifically now covers only the United Arab yes. Emirates per se? Uh, this is only the Emirates now, yeah, and uh, uh, this is the part one. And then I have mm -hmm. also um, several other books, especially on the fauna of Palestine. Okay. And the last one was this one, Fauna Palestina, Haywanat mm -hmm. uh, Palestine. This is part five, so I have written, uh, this is, uh, was issued in 2015. Wow! And this is one of the animals where, which is uh, very, uh, very famous. Uh, for example, Palestine. Uh, it's called this Palestine. is the honey badger. Okay. Or in Arabic, al-Durban or al -Ghrir, the uh -huh. And it lives in Palestine, in, uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, in Saudi Arabia, in Yemen, Oman, uh, the Emirates, uh, Qatar, Bahrain, Bahrain Kuwait, 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 Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon, Syria. Syria. 
Just uh, there. Them. So this is in, this, in area, this area and also in Africa. Uh -huh. But uh, this one uh, is an Arabian subspecies. Okay. Which lives in the Arabian Peninsula. Subspecies. 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 Yes. That's a new word that you just mentioned there, yeah, yeah. Professor. Yeah, yeah. Subspecies meaning there is other, like a mother other. species yes. of that, then it's further disintegrated yeah. into other small species? Yes, There's, we say usually uh, every animal is called a species. Uh, for okay. example, any plant or uh -huh. any animal mm -hmm. is a species of. Um, uh, of a of a being, or uh, for example, it's a plant or a or of, an animal. Of an existence. Yeah. So a plant or a, yes, plant or an animal. Mm -hmm. So we call it species, and it has two names. Okay. Uh, specific name. It's a genus name and a species name. Species name. So every plant, every animal has a species and a genus, a genus name. name. Oh, correct. Uh, even the uh, the human beings are uh, called Homo, Homo sapiens. Ah. Homo, Homo is the genus, okay. Sabinus is the, uh, is the species. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, so, for example, uh, this is, uh, this one is, for example, is called uh, in Latin, so it's usually Latin. 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 Uh, so, for my understanding and maybe for our viewers, normally the, is it Greek or Latin name? Yeah. It's either Greek or it's Latin. Yeah, usually, usually, uh -huh. yeah, usually it's a Latin, but uh, sometimes it's Greek. Yes, Greek, uh, Greek, right. Greek name. All right. Um, uh, and for example, this one uh, is called Melivora Capensis. Mm -hmm. This one is in Latin. Yeah. Capen. Oh. <laughs> for example, this one. That is complex, you yeah. guys. Melivora. You need to research to understand some of the wisdom that we are getting here today. <laughs> Melivora, uh -huh. Melivora. Uh -huh. Uh, many vora that means uh, in Latin mm -hmm. liking of honey because mm -hmm. this animal likes, likes honey. honey. Ah, you call many it honey vora. Bird. Yeah, many vora. Mm -hmm. Capensis, capensis uh, is in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an area. Okay. Uh, um, and this is why it is called capensis. Okay. The Cape of the South Cape Africa. Of South Africa. Yeah, the Cape of South Africa. Uh -huh. um, the Cape of Good Hope, you know. Oh, I've Africa. had it. Uh, they have some yeah. minerals there that has made it very, very known, yes, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So, you um, have been doing a number of books yeah. since. This uh, one. You need that? Yeah, this one is very interesting. Found out the Emirates where we are living in we the Emirates. We are in Emirates, Emirates correct. And this is here. This is a whale shark. Whale shark. That's the biggest fish in the world. Uh, it can reach a length of around uh, between tw 12 and 15 meters. Whoa. That's the biggest one, which lives also in the Arabian Gulf, so in Dubai area, and uh, also the Arabian Sea, uh, mm -hmm. near Fujairah. Uh -huh. uh, Professor, you say a whale shark. I think this is something new to both yeah. myself and our viewers on the yeah. other side. Um, a whale is known to be a sea mammal. Sea mammal, yes. Correct. And uh, according to the, our understanding, I would, uh, I would speak for the people who will view us. Yes. Uh, it's a whale and it is the biggest as far as we are concerned. Yeah, it, it is a shark. The shark yeah, it's is It's called the whale shark. Uh -huh, so Why it's called whale shark? Because it's so big as a whale. Okay. But it's a, sh but it's a fish. Uh -huh. So it's not a mammal. It's not a mammal. But it's Correct. called a whale shark. It's one of the uh, several species of sharks in the world. Uh -huh. Living usually in moderate areas and in areas uh, in uh, the Indian Ocean and mm -hmm. in the Arabian Sea and also the Arabian Gulf, mm -hmm. uh, the Red Sea, the Mediterranean. Uh -huh. So we see it in many places. So and what influences the name? I'm a bit interested in this. Yeah. The name is because it's a crossbreed or hybrid no. or just the way it looks? No, it's it's a fish. Uh -huh. it, it's a, it's a, a normal shark. All right. But it's the biggest shark in the world, the biggest one. Oh. Okay. But it's not carnivorous. That means it don't have teeth, really. Oh, okay. So it's not really... Uh, Eating uh, like uh, like the eating white shark, right. like the white shark. Uh -huh. Usually, it eats planktons and oh. very small fish. 
Ah. And, and in in gulfs, you know, it's up in its, uh, its mouth, and the country. fish and the planktons, uh -huh. which is you know very the fine, very, very small uh, uh, animals. Uh -huh. uh, so it will engulf, so it will go inside its mouth and then to the stomach. Right. And sometimes it is very small fish. But okay. this is called the whale shark. So this is. Uh, uh, the biggest fish in the world, in worldwide, the world. Uh -huh. and this one, especially this one, this is a photo, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is all my photos, by the way. This is the this one. So I, you go underwater? Yes. Wow! Yes, I, I can. Uh, I, I'm also Did diving. Sea diving? Yeah, yes, I'm diving. Yes, I have a lot of uh, um, photos. Guys, did you hear that? <laughs> Uh, yes. You will have to subscribe to Professor Norman Al Talaf's uh, channel. I know there is a lot of wisdom. I just bring you news, but there is wisdom that you may need. Now, like, this is, uh, how many books have you written so far? Uh, 12 books. Whoa. Yeah. So, uh, Whoa. So, uh, this one, for example, this photo, mm -hmm. this was, uh, this fish was called Sami. Mm -hmm. And this one mm -hmm. was uh, in the big aquarium in Atlantis. You know the big ah the big aquarium yeah, there. It was there, yeah, this uh -huh. one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because it was so big, mm -hmm. it needed a lot of space, lot of space. So they released it into the Arizona into the... Gulf oh, again. All right. Yeah. So this one, that's the one, the the one which you see. I here. think uh, after the video, after the videoing, after the filming, maybe we will take like a very close snapshot, yeah, and we will the... include all the names of the yeah. books down in the description box and tell us what and, more do you do oh, yeah, and here. i this think is, i've seen this in alain zoo yeah this is here uh -huh. what you see here they can see the name of the book in Arabic. Uh -huh. this one is the arabian leopard leopard correct this is the most famous uh, carnivore uh -huh. and predator in the arabian peninsula uh -huh. and it lived before more in uh, places like the Emirates and uh, still now it's living in Oman Correct. and in Yemen uh -huh. and in Saudi Arabia. Saudi, yes, Saudi, I think the, in the mountains, the quarter mountain half, there is something called the empty half or yeah, the empty quarter, empty quarter in Saudi quarter. Arabia. But so it, it's not living in the desert. I it's think living it in inhibits a lot of animals as well. Yes, uh -huh. but uh, this one is living in the mountains, okay. mountain area. So that uh, Arabian le le leopard okay. is called the uh, Latin name Panthera Pardus Nimr. Ah, so, but Nimr is an Arabic name. Yes. <laughs> so when the the person who named the animal, mm -hmm. uh, usually sometimes from time to time they use the uh, traditional name from the area. Ah. So they call it Panthera. It's a panther. Mm -hmm. And then Pardus, Pardus. yeah, that's, okay. a, that's a Latin name. That's I a think I name. remember it from high school. Right. I'm not so rusty. <laughs> and then Nimr is in the name of this animal in Arabic. In Arabic. Nimr al Arab. Nimr al Arabi. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. um, it was living also here in uh, Ras al Khaimah area, Khaimah Khaimah Fujira Khaimah. Mountains. Yeah, Correct. in the past now it is extinct. Uh, I think maybe because of human activities human activities um, and hunting and because it was uh, you know uh, hunting uh, some of the uh, animals which was uh, belonging to some of the shepherds for uh -huh. example um, uh, goats this and the sheep, sheep for example so they, uh, they was killed. To do away yes. with them. so it was killed. Uh -huh. till today uh, sorry about saying that you know that because this is uh, very bad for our uh, fauna and for the um, environment especially so, if yeah. you are a campaigner for animals for the world like yes. professor norman Alcalaf has invested in excess of 30 years yes. just to understand the world just to understand and put it down in form of knowledge in books and make it available for you and i who cannot go see deep sea diving to take photos of the whale shark yeah, yeah. So about your books, how are you like marketing your books? Uh, 
because uh, I have realized most of them are in Arabic. So, uh, are you working on incorporating yes. non-Arabic speakers to get to share in the knowledge that you have? Yes, um, I'm not only writing in Arabic. I'm writing in Arabic. I'm writing in English, and I'm writing in German. Even. So, in three oh, languages. In so, three languages. Yes. Wow. So, I'm writing three languages. So, when you buy a book, for example. Uh, you have three languages, so different uh, research papers okay. in different uh, languages. So the, the objective for the research may be the same. Yeah. Maybe different titles, but heading towards same knowledge path. If yeah. I get a German-based book or Arabic or English. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. You people, you need to tap into some of this knowledge that we are getting here today. So what else do you do? You seem to be... A man that is very diverse yes. and versatile, and you do extremely well in thank whatever you, you do. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh -huh. um, so, I was writing all the time about books, and then my wife and uh, my daughter, they said, Papa, you are always writing about animals, 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 <laughs> write something about something else. All right. <laughs> so, I decided, because uh, we have uh, a lot of ancient photographs of our family so it's a very old photograph mm -hmm. uh, dating back to uh, from, you know the, the oldest one from 1916 Whoa. so it's more than 100, more than 100 years. years correct so i decided to uh, to write a book about my family mm. so i wrote the book here about uh, this is the book Okay. Uh, this is. I think we will zoom in and take a very clear yeah. photo of so it. So this is about uh, my the, the picture here. This is my uh, grand grandfather. Whoa. This is Al Hajj Tahir Al Sharif Al Hajj Tahir Muhammad Ahmed Ahmed Mustafa uh, Muhammad Abdullah. Wow. So, uh, you need so, to get, we are talking about maybe five or six generations right here. Yeah. For example, my name is uh -huh. Norman Ali uh -huh. bin Bassam. Uh -huh. Bassam is my father. Okay. Bin Ali. Ali. So Ali, my daughter, bin Ali. Father. Bin Tahir. This is okay. Tahir. Uh -huh. Tahir. Tahir. Bin Muhammad. Okay. Bin Ahmed. Uh -huh. Bin Ahmed. So great, great four bin times. Bin Mustafa. Yeah. Bin Mustafa, mm -hmm. Bin Abdullah, All right. Bin Muhammad, okay. Al Khalaf. So we have seven generations. Al Yafawi, Al Yafawi comes from Yafa. Al Aizari coming from Al Aizariya. Al uh -huh. is the, bait, the city of uh -huh. near Jerusalem. Near Jerusalem. So, um, All right. so that means my family originates Which from, is right now yeah. disintegrating. And, yes. uh, but at least the history part has still so, been very okay. much preserved. From what I see, the history part has still been very much preserved yeah, yeah, in several yeah. other books, in uh, scholars, scholarly people like you. You are a professor. I know Palestine as a country, not a good majority of people have the chance like you have had. You think you want to share that a little bit? Maybe give a message of hope to somebody. Yes. Uh -huh. um... You know, we are, we call it Palestine. This is uh, the holy land. We call it also Al Ard al Muqaddasa. Mm -hmm. Al Ard al Mubaraka. Uh, Mubaraka, blessed. Yeah, the blessed. Al Ard al Muqaddasa, the holy. Uh, we have it uh, also in the Quran, as you know, where Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Subhanallah, Ladi Asra bi Abdi Laylan, min al Masjid al Haram, ila al Masjid al Aqsa, al Ladi Barakna Hawlahu. That means Al Masjid Al Aqsa, here Al Masjid Al Aqsa, which is the uh, Al Aqsa Mosque Aqsa in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, yeah. okay. Al uh, Ladi Barakna Hawlahu. That means. Al uh, Ladi is Almighty. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. The, the the area around Jerusalem is a blessed area. Oh, oh yeah. I, not only in the not only in the Quran we are maybe diverging okay. a bit, but I see in the initial ancient books as well. Yes. So there are, let's say, if there is three uh, religious books, that is the Quran, the Bible, and the first one was Torah. Yes. So Torah. all of these books yes. acknowledge Palestine yes. as a very blessed land. Yes. In the Bible, it's called the land of milk and honey. In Torah, I think, uh, I don't really remember, but yes. Palestine is very, very blessed. Yes. Uh, the land of, of the uh, we say the 
and zaitun zaitun. Zaitun zaitun. I was gonna say olive oil. Olive oil, zaitun zaitun. So um, that's right. What you are saying uh, that means uh, this is the, the blessed countries of the blessed country of three religions, the main religions, uh, the Judaism, mm -hmm. uh, Christianity, and, and Islam. Islam. Mm -hmm. So all three. And this is why we are a blessed country, but in the past, since 5,000 years, everybody wanted this city because it's the holy city. And everybody's saying, this is this my is city. So everybody's fighting. Nobody, for this. Want, nobody will fight for something that is not productive, yes. that is not blessed. And I think it mm. is a blessing yes. to be born a Palestinian. Yes. I don't know what uh, the viewers may be thinking, but to be acknowledged as the most blessed place. Yes. If ancient books recognize that people will fight over this land because it's fertile, because it flows with milk and honey, because it does not run out of olive oil. And you know, olive oil represents healing, represents happiness, represents good peace. life, represents peace. peace. Yes. You know, so I think probably this is one of the reasons why everyone wants a little bit of Palestine. Yes. So I don't know, is there a chance for somebody like me to one day visit or... Uh... Inshallah, why not? You know, you hope, uh, <laughs> we hope that you know, the borders will open, you know, we hope that mm -hmm. one day peace will come to this country. Uh, because as you see here, always you are hearing... Uh, there is uh, always something going on. Negative uh, news from you know here in and we want see, I have we a, want peace. We want have, to have positive. I uh, have another. I have uh, the chance to have another Palestinian friend. When I was doing when I started this YouTube channel, she was like, "Do you know you are giving news about coronavirus cases just every day? But you will not give for Palestine." I was like, "Why?" And she's saying because everything has been closed, no cases coming. And she was right. I kept on monitoring and for the longest time there was no case confirmed. And I think up until now, you have the least cases in the world. We have one of the least cases, but uh, now in the last few days, you know, they opened, uh, you know, the lockdown. And uh, uh, we have the problem when we have the weddings, for example, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a lot of, you know, families and friends gathering. Mm -hmm. And this is also uh, why we have now newer cases in Palestine. So, Professor? Yes. What do you want to say about the coronavirus situation in uh, Palestine? Do you think it could have been handled differently or the way it's being done is just okay? Uh, in the beginning, we are saying from the beginning from in March, uh, it was the, observed the first cases in Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are talking about really three parts. The okay. first part is the part of Palestine 1948, which is under Israel, okay. uh, where you have more cases because it's under Israeli law. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I think now they have over 20,000 cases in, over 20,000 cases in, uh, in Palestine 48 with, you know, with Israel. Mm -hmm. um, there was no real lockdowns in the cities, so right. it was really open. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no uh, real precautions. Mm -hmm. So this is why it became widespread uh, in, in Palestine 48. But all in all, I think Palestine did a very, very good job. Yes. Because for the longest time, there was no infections. Yes. There was no infections at all. In fact, when the whole world had already gone under curfew and lockdowns, they still were gathering for prayers. And this was very, very refreshing to see that at least there is still one country that can meet up together yes. and do prayers on behalf of the whole world. Yes. It was very refreshing. Um, uh, as I said, uh, we have the case of uh, the Palestine 1948 area mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the West Bank mm -hmm. and the West Bank is under Palestinian rule and then we have also the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So the best area is really the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because uh, it was closed. It is anyway closed since over now 11 or 12 years. All, right. uh, all borders are closed, Israeli and Egyptian uh, borders. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that there's no influx, nobody coming inside and uh, nobody not, not coming outside. Correct. So only very few cases. And uh, very few cases were registered mm -hmm. um, coming from outside mm -hmm. to Gaza and they were uh, in the quarantine and then it was okay now we don't have any, any single case in uh, active case in Gaza wow so zero zero, zero case zero case how in Gaza. amazing nobody yeah. would have thought that you see when the whole coronavirus situation came I think people started grading countries that this country is rich this country has a very rich healthcare system and I think the grading was based on which country is more elite more advanced yeah. in medicine but I yeah. think that has really changed the perspective of many people yeah. looking at some of the very big countries that we thought would yes. handle it but they have had actual more deaths yes. and more cases and still active so yeah. i think some of these countries have really really done well and palestine is the first on my list on handling it the most appropriately yeah they handled it very appropriate as you said uh -huh. uh, there was quarantine from the beginning you know there was lockdowns Lockdown. from the beginning mm -hmm. they were very they were very strict mm -hmm. Um, and the people obeyed, you know, I mean, the, the Palestinians, they obeyed what the government uh, gave them as an order. Okay. And um, this is why uh, we have very few cases in the West Bank. We have some cases mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, became more in the last few days, as mm -hmm. I said, because we have uh, more mm -hmm. gatherings, for mm -hmm. example, uh, for example, funerals or even uh, weddings, uh, weddings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we have more people and this is why the, the numbers have risen now we are talking about a num number of around 3,000 people all together all together all together I think that 3, is thousand. but as I said in Gaza Strip so we have uh, zero active, no cases, active cases. Yeah, cases and that's good now we have active cases in the West Bank so I'm, they are trying now to make lockdowns uh, closing whole cities and whole um, uh, villages mm -hmm. and uh, we hope all the best we really hope all the yes. best inshallah 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 kul shi ra yakun tamam inshallah nitmanna la palestine anno yakun kul shi tamam wa anno al jaiha waba al corona yakhtifi يختفي من فلسطين ويختفي من العالم كله. من العالم كله ما زبوت. Disappear from not only from Palestine in the whole world in the Emirates and Arabian countries and the whole world Africa, Asia, Europe, America, yeah North America, South America. So we hope one day so we can return to the normal life which we have lived. We hope so. So thank you so much, Professor yeah. Norman Alcala, for coming in. Shukran Ilak, Shukran uh, Jazeera. Uh, we say Sharafna. Yeah, <laughs> and we say Ilalika. I know a little bit of Arabic, so Ilalika say we can do this again. Yeah, الله <laughs> 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 ان شاء الله يكون متابعين اكثر ونشوف قناتك من احسن متابعين اكثر هلا بدي متابعين من فلسطين ونسبسكرايب ان شاء الله سمحتوا تابعوها من فلسطين ومن البلاد العربيه من بلاد الشام من سوريا ومن الاردن ومن لبنان ان شاء الله من العراق ومن الجزيرة العربية ومن السعودية ومن الإمارات و... من كل ما هناك عم بحكي عربي وراح تفهم ولي يعني آه. <تصفيق> يلا شكرا شكرا آه. كثير آه. لكم يلا السلام آه. عليكم ورحمة آه. الله وبركاته مع السلامة شكرا وأنا يسلمكم باي باي